Welcome back. Although the World Health Organization declared polio conquered in the Western Hemisphere, it doesn't mean that we're out of danger. Consider the case of a 22-year-old Arizona woman who's now afflicted with paralytic polio. She hadn't been vaccinated and contracted the crippling disease during a trip to Costa Rica in 2005. The following year in Minnesota, five unvaccinated Amish children also contracted polio, and they hadn't traveled abroad. In November 2007, public health officials in Maryland threatened more than 2,000 parents with jail time for failing to get their school-aged kids vaccinated. Make no mistake about it, polio is poised for quite a comeback, unless vaccination rates ratchet up quickly. The Centers for Disease Control just came out with new information. There are one million American children who are unvaccinated against polio, in spite of the fact that polio has returned to the United States. Why aren't more children vaccinated? In many cases, it's for socioeconomic reasons. In other cases, it's a choice, like the religious exemptions found in the Amish community. But for many, the reason is fear fear that vaccines contribute to medical problems like autism. This belief is grounded in a decades-old practice of using a mercury-based preservative called thimerosal in vaccines. Although mercury is no longer used, the concerns and fears still linger. Parents have been scared by this publicity from certain quarters in Congress. Certain congressmen claim that their grandchildren have autism because of the vaccines they received. Uh, and this, uh, plus some ad advocate groups against vaccination, have really made some parents uh, reluctant or um, queasy about getting their children vaccinated. And that has done a lot of harm. I don't know where the tipping point is. It probably doesn't matter if one parent um, in 10 million chooses not to have a child vaccinated because if everybody else is vaccinated, the chances of getting the disease are not great. But if the movement against vaccination proceeds, my fear is that some of these diseases will come back. The nightmare scenario is that a polio infected person gets on a plane in India, has no symptoms at all, lands at Newark Airport or at JFK, goes to visit their cousins in Newark or in Brooklyn, carries the polio virus with them, infects these unvaccinated children, and we have six, a dozen or more cases of paralytic polio show up at a hospital. In response to this potential health crisis, Dr. Bruno has launched a campaign called Nip It to spread the word about proper vaccinations. And he's counting on retirees to sound the clarion call. The problem is that people who are not um, over 50, people who don't remember the polio epidemics of the 40s and 50s, don't know about polio. So they're not interested in necessarily getting their children vaccinated against a disease about which they know absolutely nothing. So one of the things that we're trying to do is where the March of Dimes was the Mother's March of Dimes to raise money for the polio vaccine. The Nippet campaign to vaccinate America's kids who aren't getting the polio vaccine is really gonna be the grandmother's campaign. It's the grandmothers, the folks, you know, 50, 60, 70, who remember the terror of the polio epidemics. And they're the ones who are gonna to have to say to their kids, hey, listen, Polio isn't gone, you know, it's in Africa, it's in the U.S. Somebody could get on a plane and show up in your city and give your kid polio if your kid doesn't have the polio vaccine to remind them that vaccination is vital. It's up to all of us who remember the scourge of polio to help get that message out. Without proper vaccinations, quite possibly we could be looking at a resurgence of polio in parts of the world, like the U.S., that thought it was conquered. Although schools still require all children to be vaccinated before enrolling, that requirement only kicks in at about age five. That leaves millions of infants vulnerable if their parents don't get them proper vaccines. 
everybody goes to school and by law is supposed to be vaccinated against polio and when you talk to school officials they'll say oh yes you know 96 percent of our children are vaccinated when they enter school well the problem is those years from six months to five years old when the kids go to school and that's where the kids are not being vaccinated that's where the polio uh, potential is in the u.s one of the surest pre medical procedures we have to cut medical costs is prevention. And vaccines are the best preventatives there are of uh, disease. And so uh, it's, it's been uh, uh, almost scandalous that vaccines, have, parents have been frightened to reject uh, vaccines for their children. Hi there, everyone. I'm Gene Autry. Hello. I'm Roy Campanella of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Well, hi there, boys and girls. This is Captain Kangaroo. Here's the happy secret of it all. And while a half century ago, some of the biggest names in Hollywood led the charge in an all-out PR blitz to urge proper vaccination, today, there's only a smattering of public awareness of widespread immunization efforts mostly mounted by organizations like Rotary Club and the United Nations. Soon, the world will be polio-free. Rotary, humanity in motion. And aimed at parts of the world other than the United States, where polio still has not been contained. Today in the U.S., there are nearly half a million polio survivors. For some who may not yet realize it, polio is not over. It lies quietly under the surface. The damage it did to them as children is just now being felt, waiting to erupt again with a new round of old polio symptoms. We'll meet some who are wrestling with the effects of post-polio syndrome when polio revisited returns. <laughs>